Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Let's go over our agenda for this morning. I've personally been in the AV industry for 20 years, and I'm sure you all have interacted with corporate audiovisual or collaboration technologies in your lifetime and have found some frustrations, us too. Um, over the next 30 minutes, you'll learn what we understand to be some of the reasons why there's been so much pain around AV uh, traditionally and some new ways to address that pain. Um, our speaker will be covering our changing digital landscape, how that applies to corporate meeting spaces and some ways you can deal with it. We hope you'll walk away with a new perspective on um, a way to manage multiple disparate technologies, lower your total cost of ownership and make meetings easier and more productive. I'd like to introduce our speaker, Bob Sharp. Bob has over 30 years in tech. Um, starting out as a professional photog in England, Bob has always been able to see the big picture. I've worked with him for several years while he was an executive at SVSI, one of the pioneers in AV over IP. Now, Bob is the Vice President of Global Business Development for Utelogy. He will be walking us through the agenda for about 30 minutes, and uh, we'd love to hear from you too. So if you have any comments or questions as we go along, please type them in the chat window and we'll address them in our Q&A at the end. And with that, take it away, Bob. Well, thank you so much. And I do appreciate you spending this time with us. Uh, your time is obviously valuable and it is appreciated. We all know that over the past few years, there's been significant changes in, the, in our world. We have companies like eBay, one of the largest retailers in the world that owns no inventory and Airbnb, largest hotel chain in the world that owns no real estate. And we're all familiar with Uber, Uber, no cars, and Facebook, largest media company probably in the world, but they own no content. And that sort of change is going through in our AV and UC world as well. One of the most significant changes that I've seen in the past few years is the move from companies having a few large complex uh, conference rooms to having maybe even hundreds of small meeting spaces and huddle room has become a lexicon in our industry now and we all know what that is. There's also an extensive use now of software codecs, uh, Zoom, Skype, WebEx, etc rather than a dependence on hardware, on Cisco, Polycom, uh, codecs, hardware codecs. Global collaboration is uh, more commonplace these days than it was before. And I think also there's a sort of instant gratification. IT is becoming increasingly responsible for AV. I'm sure we all have seen that. And I think Interesting enough, there's a lot more appetite now in the corporate world, in the enterprise world, for an OPEX model rather than CAPEX consumption. And, you know, you see that trend where for buildings are not necessarily now owned by the enterprise. They're leased. They lease their IT infrastructure. They uh, outsource many functions within the company. So, I think there is a move away from this feeling of we do a, a project with a four year refresh. We do the conference rooms, we install the equipment, everything, you know, we get everything uh, signed off on and we kind of walk away. And then four years down the road, there's going to be a refresh. I think companies want to be a lot more flexible and to be able to consume AV in a op, uh, an OPEX model where they can be a lot more flexible in adding more rooms, downsizing, upsizing, etc. And of course, a concern that IT has is the speed of change of technology. They don't want to find themselves three, four years down the road with obsolete technology. Our world is now connected. You know, we move from our home to our car to our office. We expect a consistency of connectivity and communications. And examples of that, of course, are you know, Office 365 and Zoom and Skype. And very, I think, interestingly, Apple CarPlay. <laughs> Apple takes the concept of 
the interface and your personal uh, preferred UI moving with you from your home, your phone, to your car, and to your office. But of course, we know that traditional AV in meeting rooms really doesn't fit in with that. You know, the traditional Extron, Crestron, AMX control panel really doesn't fit into the app, the um, phone type of uh, interface. And in fact, the company, as Victoria mentioned, I was with before SVSI, and we were bought by Harman. And Harman and Samsung are really pushing this sort of connectivity between home, car, and office. In the enterprise environment, one thing we found was that the initial cost of just the technology, you know, the, the, the purchase of equipment, the installation, represents only about 30% of the total cost of ownership during the life cycle of that hardware and that deployment. So therefore, for, to reduce cost, the challenge is to reduce the other 70%, the ongoing cost of ownership. We believe that this can be achieved in a fairly significant way by delivering a control monitoring management analytics overlay to the software deployment. Uh, that can provide information uh, and reduce um, service time, reduce fault resolution time, and improve efficiency. Utelogy's uniqueness is to be completely hardware and platform agnostic. Open architecture, very secure standard software system. And I think that sort of hardware agnosticity is very meaningful when you're trying to look at managing, uh, monitoring a very disparate suite of hardware products from different vendors. And certainly when you look at a global deployment, uh, you know, local equipment that may be in use in, uh, you know, China that's not sold in the US and that, that type of, uh, you know, problems that that can cause for you. So how can we reduce this 70% of cost? Well, I think the key is data and analytics. What are the top five things you perhaps should know about your AVUC deployment? Number one is device status. I've got several hundred, maybe several thousand conference rooms, meeting spaces, huddle rooms, lecture halls, teaching spaces deployed, potentially deployed globally. Number one thing I need to know is everything in those rooms powered up online and working. What assets do we actually own? You know, devices, rooms, and space in our devices, rooms, and spaces. We find that when we talk to IT managers who are now responsible for AV, they literally do not know what equipment they have in all the different meeting spaces. It was installed by multiple different integrators, purchased from multiple different hardware vendors, and they just don't know what they have. Where are they physically located? And very importantly now, I think device usage statistics are going to be huge in reducing cost and, if, and improving efficiency as we look at uh, AV and UC. Uh, I can give it a sort of an anecdote of that, that many years ago, as you all know, there was a huge push to put smart boards into every kid's classroom from kindergarten through 12th grade. And being somewhat of a cynic, I often thought, you know, do those smart boards ever make kids smarter? And my own kind of feeling was perhaps not, but there's no way of knowing unless you can gather information on how often is it used, has that use per day, has that usage declined or increased over a period of time? Has it made any impact on student outcome? All of these questions is, can be derived from big data. If I can collect that kind of information from an entire school district, then I can make decisions and make informed decisions based on that analytics. And that, I think, is true in AV. We're looking at, are we using more software codecs than hardware codecs? Uh, are people in our meeting spaces using more 
wireless presentation and therefore do we need an in-room matrix switcher uh, in all of our rooms? Maybe only some rooms need uh, a matrix switcher. But if we, the key to data is collecting a lot of it to, make, uh, to allow analytics to do their job. When we're troubleshooting, we should, you know, when we get the panic call, nothing's working in, in the conference room, we need to know immediately and quickly, is it the network that's causing a problem? Is it hardware failure? Or, and quite often as we know it is, is it user error? So, what's the challenge for a user experience in today's more dynamic meeting collaboration environment? Well, you know, let's face it, often now trying to connect immediately with colleagues impromptu or even a scheduled meeting where they may be in their home, their cars or offices anywhere in the world can be very challenging. Sometimes it just does not work and creates a lot of frustration on everybody's behalf. So what are the options? Well, one is, of course, on a local level, you could simply increase the support staff, have more people on hand to, you know, rush around and, and make sure everything's working and be very responsive. But that's very cost prohibitive. Is it user error? Is it a specific piece of hardware that's causing us problems? And should we get rid of that and use something else? But, you know, we don't know if we're not being able to collect that data on a you know, larger scale across multiple rooms, it's, it's going to be an, in, an informed guess rather than hard fact. We know there's increased demand for collaboration technology. Uh, but what technology? What is being favored, reused? Um, what is more efficient? What is less, more reliable? And again, that all comes down to data. What are the statistics on our downtime? Is it, you know, a huge amount of downtime? Is it one or two rooms? Um, is it, you know, specific hardware, etc.? Video conferencing is getting very confusing. You know, we all seem to have to now have multiple software clients on our laptops and phones in order to you know, have our meetings. And that really on an enterprise level is not terribly efficient. And maybe we should again, look at uh, standardizing on a specific software codec. We've done a, you know, a lot of research over the years and what do, I'm trying to find out what do end users want from their AV experience? What's their expectation? Well, from the customer side, from the end user side, one of the big frustrations is if I've got a large deployment, and particularly now we're talking these huddle spaces, and I have to swap out a screen in a room, and I've got to perhaps substitute a later model, the original one's obsolete, or I'm going to swap brands because I'm getting a better price or, or, or deal. I have to th it, then bring in the AV programmer to recode the control system to work with the new piece of equipment. We, we know we're terribly familiar with that, but I promise you, our end users, our customers, they just don't get it. They do not understand why it is so complex to you know, update the control code. With a hardware agnostic man control management software solution that's based on configuration rather than you know, bespoke programming, you can, it works on a system of drivers. So if you simply substitute, and you can do this remotely, just as software, you can substitute the Sam Samsung driver for an LG driver. The, Control logic doesn't change. It's just the translation through the driver that changes and the control system will work seamlessly with the new display simply by substituting the appropriate driver. Consistent user interface is becoming huge. As corporates and enterprises, they don't want their staff, employees to go from room to room or building to building and be faced with an unfamiliar control UI on the touch screen in the meeting rooms. Let's face it, we have all been in meeting rooms where there's a, a cheat sheet, you know, taped next to the 
press drum control panel to tell you how to use it. And that's really no longer uh, acceptable. And I think the pr prevalence of phone apps is interesting in this because I've got a friend who's a phone app developer and he's told me that they believe they have no more than 75 seconds after a customer downloads a commercial app like you know the Hilton app or a Delta app or whatever it might be. If they, the customer can't navigate quickly and familiarly through that app, they will uninstall it. So I think we need to look at our interfaces to be a lot more uh, consistent across our enterprises, more familiar to the way people are used to working now with their phone apps. And again, if you have a, uh, a, a sort of central server concept to control, you can simply update, change, and have consistency of the interfaces because it's simply a push from the server to all the uh, control panels in the meeting spaces. Also now, you know, it's not just AV devices that we need to look at bringing into our analytics and our management and control. We're looking at the Internet of Things, we've got occupancy sensors, we've got um, temperature sensors, we've got HVAC controls, lighting controls. And in a smart building, and more and more we're seeing facilities managers of smart buildings wanting to bring AV into that arena of smart building management, bringing these sort of IoT devices into our AV world from the perspective of management control and, mon and analytics is becoming very, very increasingly important. Huge, again, is real-time support. When we are dealing with multiple, multiple conference rooms and spaces, the, you know, the panic call because the big meeting has started and the DSP's not responding, no, no audio or no video. And it's always Typically reactive, not proactive. You know, I don't know that conference room one is not functioning until someone goes in to use it. If I could get alerts, proactive alerts, real-time alerts from my entire global deployment of AV in a dashboard some fashion that said, these are the rooms that are generating alerts. I can be proactive in Responding to that, I can be, uh, and if I can actually connect into that room remotely and drill down to a specific device that is offline or causing problems, I may even be able to fix it remotely. I could reboot it. I could um, look if a configuration is wrong, like the displays somehow got a, on an HDMI 2 instead of HDMI 1 and my techs can do this remotely without having to do a, a service call. So in Utelogy, in a very familiar fashion to IT has done for years with monitoring uh, programs such as SolarWinds, we provide a dashboard hosted uh, in a cloud, so it's a, obviously it can be accessed from any, anywhere and on any device. And these dashboards are pages that, of course, allow a user to configure a view of data from their global deployment. And that includes customizable real-time alerts. How many rooms have I got? How many rooms are in use? What rooms are generating errors? Device usage reports, asset management. Um, you know, I can actually, because we are collecting information, data from these devices every five seconds, we also can collect, um, create an asset management database in the cloud that you can attach documentation to. So if I find as a piece of equipment in, uh, you know, a conference room in Tokyo that's causing needs, you know, it's not working, I can look it up and say, who installed it? Is it still under warranty? Um, who is the, you know, um, who's responsible for it, where's the people to call to come fix it. Um, that's all available to me in my cloud. So, 
Conference rooms can be obviously complex or simple. And we've talked a fair bit about the sort of hardware agnosticity that is important when you're looking at monitoring, management, and control. Because if you, we look at this conference room and every device may as well have been sourced from a different manufacturer. You know, the audio systems from Viam, the play is Samsung, the, you know, you know what, what I'm saying. So if we are trying to troubleshoot this, whether locally or remotely, the challenge is we have to have a technician that is, you know, can look, get into each device and, and try and troubleshoot it. And if we're generating alerts, and we've got a conference room that is not functioning because of uh, an issue with the audio system, if we don't know that's the problem until we go in there, uh, we're going in blind. How do we fix this? How do we work it? Well, through Utelogy, our U console remote real-time access application, technicians can remotely control, test, and troubleshoot devices in any room in a Utelogy deployment. If they can connect into the on-premise server uh, securely through VPN or TeamViewer or uh, you know, uh, a, a means that the IT uh, people are, are happy with. So with Utelogy, because it is hardware agnostic, you only need one you know, console to be able to look at any of the devices in the room. So here, if you can see in this one, we've got a matrix, Extron matrix switcher, we've got Vardio cameras, Shure microphones, you know, um, Symmetrix D DSP, um, and we've got a codec. So if we, can drill, if we can use this single console, and we can then actually test remotely each function of each device, even the functions that are not exposed in the in-room UI, but we can actually test whether, you know, we can pan left, pan right on the camera, et cetera. But you can do that remotely. This is huge in terms of cost, efficiency, and being proactive. Because if we go back to that dashboard, you're getting proactive alerts that say, in that conference room, the audio system is erroring. It's reporting errors. So then the technician can go in through this console and can actually say, drill down literally globally to a room, to a device, and it could be anywhere uh, in the country, anywhere on the planet, and actually real time test the devices and get see the response feedback from that device uh, in real time. So this is one of the big, big reasons that we are so, um, what we believe this hardware agnosticity is important because if you look at a large deployment, there's no way, you know, it's all going to be one manufacturer's hardware. It's simply not. So again, it simplifies and speeds up the ability for technicians to be responsive and efficiency, get your rooms up and running again. I think something else that we need to be very aware of, and this is a sort of wrap up before, a little bit of a wrap up before we go into the Q&A the, the portion of this, is that in AV now, there are a lot more stakeholders than there used to be, particularly because of networking. More and more, our well, our devices are going to be on the network in some fashion or another, whether for actual streaming, audio, video, or for control management. So we've got the IT department, and I know this, my history back in the day with SVSI, you know, we were the pioneers of video over IP, and we had to get over the not on my network uh, response that we always got from IT. So we had to be able to, you know, talk IT. We had to understand their concerns. We had to understand their uh, 
um, their security issues, their, um, how they uh, manage a server installation, are they virtualizing servers, all this sort of, uh, they're a stakeholder. The board is, you know, it's cost, it's efficiency, it's uh, good use of real estate. Um, real estate in major metropolitan areas is a huge, huge cost. And if you've got, let's say, a conference room in a, your Tokyo HQ, and you've got statistics that say it's only used, you know, twice a week, whereas the other three conference rooms are constantly in use, you want to know why is that conference room not being used? It may be outdated equipment. It may be it's the furthest from the coffee machine. You just don't know because you're not getting usage statistics. And if we can provide, you know, the financial people with these statistics of usage and good effective use of their real estate, it saves millions and millions of dollars. HR is involved. Retaining staff, particularly in technology companies, enterprises, is huge for them. And if they feel that, you know, their employees are frustrated and aggravated by outdated technology, uh, inefficient technology, uh, difficulty in, in having collaborative calls, and, you know, th they're going to lose their staff. They're going to go somewhere where the experience is better. And in an era of pretty well full employment, uh, that's a big concern to them. And of course, we now have facilities. Because as I mentioned, you know, the trend is for companies not to own their own real estate. And facilities managers of leased buildings are increasingly interested in how they can add value to their tenants. And they already do, obviously, environmental management, light, heat, AC, etc., security systems, occupancy, etc. If they're in more and more interested in adding AV into that suite of facility management as a value proposition to their, to their customers. So that uh, just about wraps it up time-wise for my bit. We do have time for some questions. So I'm going to thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. I know it's valuable. And obviously, do reach out um, to Victoria if you want any further information on anything that Netrix offers, or of course, uh, the Utelogy platform, please do. And now I'll ask her to fit, see if there's any questions we can field. Thank you for that, Bob. Um, so I've been monitoring the chat. We don't have a whole lot, but we do have a couple questions. Um, one of them is, uh, with all my AV devices on my network to be managed and monitored and controlled by Utelogy, how do you address security concerns with that? Sure. Well, you know, job one is the fact is that the actual piece of server software that we're installing on premise has been fully vetted and uh, scoped for any security vulnerability. And we have used a third party companies to, you know, vet our software for security concerns. The, when you're looking at simply monitoring and controlling a device, of course, it, it, you're not actually looking at audio streams, video streams, you're simply uh, sending control code out, and it can be encrypted, of course, and, uh, uh, but, you know, it's not as severe an issue in security concerns as it is with actual data, actual video audio streaming, which of course has to be, you know, fully encrypted and um, in order to uh, be secure. But the main, from our perspective, our main issue is that our, our software has been fully vetted for any vulnerability <clears throat> uh, in, on, a, on a server network. And that's how we've, re you know, dealt with that. All right. Good stuff. Um, and then uh, another question we got. Um, so these cloud-based dashboards with data, um, what resistance have you faced in deploying cloud-based software and how have you managed that? Yeah, well, 
we're not the way utility works is a sort of a hybrid so the actual sort of control and data gathering is done on premise on a or a piece of server software that's deployed on premise uh, on you know as any other server application is in, a, in an environment and then the cloud side is simply an outbound connection to microsoft azure and we chose azure because of course you know it's very well known it hosts skype it hosts office 365 so there's a lot less resistance to a microsoft azure uh, than a sort of homegrown cloud uh, platform. But the way it, Utelogy works, it is outbound only. So we're simply passing data, raw data, up to the cloud. We're not allowing any ingress from the cloud side to the server uh, where you, that would uh, introduce a vulnerability. We do still, you know, there are still companies and particularly banks and, um, you know, obviously government, military, etc., who are very, very risk adverse to um, anything cloud, although it is changing, it just is, but they are very risk adverse. And we do have an option for them to host the cloud portion of the Utelogy platform to host that themselves. Great. Well, that ends our Q&A. And, and the webinar also. This uh, webinar has been recorded and um, will be, we can send out a link if you guys uh, wanna watch it or share with your colleagues. Um, thank you again, everyone, for your time. We appreciate you joining us today. And uh, again, you know, if there's any questions, you wanna see a demo, or if you want more information, please feel free to reach out to me. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody.